Hello, welcome to a new Creature tutorial. This tutorial is going to go through the process of actually using the flow particle effect system of Creature and exporting it and running it in the Unreal Engine. It's very exciting because now you can actually use the flow effect system in Unreal Engine itself, use you know, authored with Creature, and that allows for some very interesting possibilities in terms of character effects. If you have any kind of particle effect you want to associate with a character, you, you can consider using this feature. Now, runtimes for other engines will also be rolled out uh, over time because, as you know, particle systems are quite complicated, so we have to make sure it's optimal for the particular game engine. So this tutorial is focused on the Unreal Engine. Now, I want to uh, say one more thing, which is the this feature is not a replacement for Unreal's native particle solver. Yeah, So it complements the Unreal Particle Solver. If you have flipbook style animations that are associated, short ones in particular, that, that are associated with the character that are used, you know, you have particle effects which are flip, flip, flipbook style in nature, this is very suitable. But you, if you're going to have very long dynamic effects, then you should be using the Unreal Engine's native particle solver. So you can pick and choose between both of them. I want to say that the, the ones that are used in this case, the particle compu computation is all pre-computed, so there's very little overhead, but then again, it's not as dynamic as the native particle solver of Unreal. So you need to decide what kind of, kind of effects you're going for for your character or your game before proceeding. But in any case, Let's proceed with the rest of this tutorial. Okay, so first off, I want to say that this example, this Space Marine, has been uploaded to the Creature Samples page, basically the documentation page that lists all the samples and videos. So feel free to go ahead and download it from there. Now, the particle files for Flow are not distributed, obviously, because they are huge. And so what you want to do is you want to download this sample and then run the flow particle system again just open up flow and click run that's all you need to do and you 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 will see the particle effects of the space marine shooting uh you know uh, uh some kind of gun <laughs> and you have all kinds of tracers and smoke and bullets flying out it's pretty cool but yeah so the samples online and let's take a look at the samples very simple is your standard creature uh character with different body parts it's all rigged up for you. It's weighted properly. You can see, you know, this is all very basic creature stuff. So if you're not familiar with creature, I encourage you to watch the previous tutorials, the very basic ones on how to rig up a character or creature. Very basic stuff. Let's go into the more interesting stuff. Now there is base animation for this character, as you can see, which basically just does this, this gun shooting animation. This, the purpose of this tutorial is not actually to teach you how to animate this character, uh, we're, I'm assuming you already know how to animate a character and creature, but I'll go through some of the core, more interesting bits of this animation to, to show you what was what was done. Now, if you play, you see the particles, but if I stop it, for example, if you look at the regions here, this is actually using image swapping. Yeah, So you can see there in the uh, image timeline track, you can see there's a bunch of image swaps going on. So we are swapping the base images for, for this flame. But other than that, the rest of the animation is using the flow particle system. And let's see how it's done. So go to animate, go here, go to motor swaps effects, click on flow, and we bring up the flow graph. <laughs> there are actually two particle solvers going on. And this is, well actually three, three particle solvers going on. This is not, again, a basic tutorial on flow. I did actually a whole series of tutorials on the flow effect system, and I also encourage you to watch them. But let's just see what's going on at the, uh, you know, basically what's going on. There are three solvers. So one of the solvers is actually for the bullets flying out. Another solver is actually for the smoke, and the final one is for the, the tracer, the tracers, right? So if we look at, for example, the tracers, you notice a couple interesting things going on that we have the has trail checked because the tracers are, are, are a trail, right? So if you go to the end of this, if I play this, you can see these are tracers, right? The tracer animation. So that actually allows you to have tracer type particles going through. So that's the most interesting bit about the tracer 
particle effects portion. The rest of it is pretty standard flow stuff. You always have, for example, a region pause node that allows you to basically embed uh, the source of where you want the particles to be emitted. In this case, it's actually embedded close to the gun. Let me see if I am correct about this. So if we actually come in here, and I believe it's probably somewhere over here. Let's see. There you go. Yeah, exactly. So this is the embedding point. You see this? That shiny red dot. So that's the embedding point of where the tracer particles are emitted. And you have the same for the rest as well. Now, if we come up here to the smoke, you can see it's Again, you notice this pattern for most of the flow effect setups where you always have a region pause so you can actually embed where you want the particles to, to be emitted from. You always have a radio source. These are all pretty standard setups. Again, covered in the previous tutorials. What's more interesting about this, this is a smoke solver. The, the more interesting thing is where it actually creates a solver sensor node. This is covered again in the previous tutorials, but I'll just reiterate again. What this does is it actually extracts out the current state of the particle solver. So you can grab all you know, the, the current positions, velocities, temperature, etc., of each particle. And then you can actually map it to a curve function. So in this case, what we're doing is we're going to enlarge the smoke as it emanates from some source. It's going to grow over time, which is kind of cool. Right? And, and then it fades away. So let's see what we got here. You can see, there you go. That's the smoke. See that? It, and it, it, it emanates, it comes out and, and grows, just like how real smoke is. And and I believe the gravity is tuned to be a, let's see, uh, positive, exactly, a positive number. So it goes up. So the smoke actually floats up to simulate buoyancy. Yeah. So that is the smoke portion. And then finally, the bullets are, again, very standard stuff. Nothing fancy. Almost the same setup. Yeah. And if you come here, these are the bullets. Let's see what we get here. Ah, you see that the bullet, let me actually turn off the bones so you can see it more clearly. So there you go, the bullet's coming out. So the whole the whole effect comes together. You have this space marine shooting a gun, bullets coming out, ricocheting, and then you have tracers and you have smoke. Okay, pretty standard stuff. And what you do once you are done is you do game engine export and this will actually do a lots of things, optimize your texture atlas size for all your particles. So it's actually going to pack all the sprites you use for your particles and everything else with your character into a gigantic atlas. So one thing to note is if you have a very complicated particle system, your atlas might be quite large, which depending on what you're trying to target might be a concern. So particle effects in general are more expensive than your standard run of the mill character. So you should maybe if you're concerned about that, maybe you shouldn't use it that much. But if you're using it for main characters or to you know, show a certain cutscene, that could be really cool. So this will, again, be dependent on, on the type of character effect you're trying to do. The other thing, too, is about looping. Uh, because these particles are baked out, the, you have to make sure that, in general, it's recommended that your particles are actually faded out at the end of your animation so that it does a proper loop. And if you want to have, you know, real dynamics, then I recommend you still stick to the native particle system of your game engine. Now, in the game engine export mode, it doesn't show your particles, but don't worry, it doesn't matter. Just go on and click export, and then you can then export out the data. Now, I want to show, show you the exported out data, and that's the more interesting part. You'll notice that if you have a particle system with flow, there will be a dot particles file. Now, this is what you want to care about. Th these are all the particles that have been exported out for game engine use. So you definitely definitely need that file. Yeah. And in Unreal Engine, of course, as you know, you need the JSON and the Atlas, but you also need for flow the metadata. All right. So just to reiterate, you need the particles file, you need your JSON file, your Atlas, of course, and your metadata. So these files have to be present and imported into your Unreal Engine session in order for flow to work. And so let's jump into Unreal Engine right now and see what how we set it up. Okay, so now we're in Unreal Engine. So here is our character setup. And if I play it, you'll see this is the character with the flow effect system with you know all the smoke and the guns and the bullets. I think it's quite pretty cool. Okay, 
So how do you import in all your stuff? Well, I assume you already, you've already seen the previous tutorials on how to set up your basic character in Unreal Engine using the creature runtime system. So I'm not going to go through all of them, but I'll go through more of the important points. So assuming you've set up your character, the next thing you want to do is to drag in your flow particles file. Just drag and drop and it will then prompt you to make a new asset. Now I'm not going to make a new, so there you go. So that's the new asset, but I'm not going to make a new one because I already have one currently for this guy. As you see, I've played it and you can see that one. Right? Yeah, but let's see how it's set up. So again, make sure it's a blueprint character. So let me select the Marine. There you go. So let's open up the blueprint editor for this character and let's zoom in. Right, nothing, nothing fancy here. Just your pretty standard stuff. So let's see what the setup is. So, first of all, of course, you need the materials. That will depend again on what type of how you want to set up your material, what effects you want. That is material dependent. It's pretty standard Unreal Engine stuff. The animation assets you have to obviously link that up. That's your JSON. The metadata also link that up. So these two are crucial in order for Flow to function and these are really basic uh, requirements you need to know when you're running your creature runtimes they're all covered in the, the previous Unreal Engine tutorials. Now more importantly you also need to link up the particle asset. That's it. That's really all it is. So in addition to these two you also just link up the slot, the creature particles asset slot and you're good to go. There's no other setup that is actually involved in this case because if you see Take a look at the event graph for the blueprint for this character. There's nothing. So as long as you have it have it connected to this character, as long as you have the particle assets connected to this character, you are good to go. And there shouldn't be anything else that you need to worry about. So if you play it, if you play it, then you see the flow effect system running in its full, full glory on the, on in Unreal Engine. So that's really all it is. It's actually quite simple to get your flow effect system set up for your character. Just remember again. You need to set up your basic character with the metadata slot also connected and also the particle slot, which is basically your particle system from Flow. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I think this is a very powerful addition to the Creature Game Engine Runtime Library. And over time, we're going to start rolling out the Flow FlowFX support for other engines as well. So I hope, again, you had a fun time watching this, this tutorial and happy animating.